Sports, everyone. It is official Saturday. You know, at the beginning of the show, I say we're here every day. Well, we are now here every day again, Jim. Monday through Friday, myself, Mike Sempervivi. Saturday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Jim Valley returns this weekend going head-to-head with NXT. And, of course, Andrew Zarian on Sundays. Excited to be back, Jim? Yes. Oh, just, I didn't realize NXT was at the same time. I'm, can I cancel? Nope. Ah, oh, damn. No, that'll be great. I'm looking. You can do live play-by-play, brother. And look, give me something to do. While Put it on the on. background. Tell us what's happening on this show. Yeah, no. Tell it, us how long the video packages are. Oh, geez, I don't have that kind of time. I look at an hour. Hey, listen. I'm gonna. I got to go through this. Uh, I don't want to take away any of your time, Jim. But uh, I, I got to get into this. I'm gonna go over this NXT report. Feel free to jump in if you want to. But I need to get over this report because I got something I got to read from ESPN, and I got to talk about it. So, let's get going. It opened up with Imperium, Gunter, Marcel Bartel, and Fabian Eichner beating LA Knight and MSK in a six-man tag. And, of course, Imperium are the tag team champions. And I could not help but notice that they won. They pinned Nash Carter. So, uh, there's a number of potential reasons for that. And we can talk about that this weekend. But Imperium got the win there. I thought it was a very good match. Hard to not have a good match. The only downside was the fans who hate MSK and they hate the name Gunther. And so they're just going to chant whatever they want. And it takes away from the matches. And, uh, you know, local chants on a national show. Whatever. Not my favorite, but there you go. We had Kaylee and EO bickering backstage, which was ridiculous because, uh, you know, Kaylee goes... You know, the best woman is going to win. And so EO goes, yeah, it's going to be me. And Kaylee is completely taken aback. I-, I can't believe that you would say that you're better than me. As some of these backstage interviews, brother, holy smokes. Uh, Dakota Kai found uh, Wendy Chu's pillow all torn up backstage. She's now missing because on NXT people go missing regularly. We had Ivy He's, Nile. It's been what? Like two weeks since a kidnapping story? Yeah, they, they, they were, were due a kidnapping. Man, wrestling kidnapping. Ivy Nile beat Tiffany Stratton. They practiced this match nonstop for a week, and uh, it's fine. I mean, it only went like maybe two and a half, three minutes, but they didn't screw anything up. I mean, it's this is not really how you learn how to work, but, I mean, if you're going to be doing one show a week and it's going to be on national television, you do what you got to do. And uh, Ivy Nile beat her after a distraction from Sarai. So, uh, you know, it was fine. Everything you'd expect out of a WWE match. Short choreographed distraction finish that's uh, nxt 2.0 we had a champa promo where he goes you know everyone thinks it might be the end this weekend for tommaso champa in nxt and then literally at the end of the thing he folds up a chair and it says uh september 9 2015 to april 2nd 2022 <laughs> so i guess he's done after this weekend we had a uh, we had we had video packages with ziggler and braun breaker which are very good uh, building up the main event. Storyline is, uh, you know, Braun Breaker is a hard-working, tough guy. He's first in, last out, works his ass off, lives, breathes NXT. Ziggler's a guy from the main roster that flies in, does his stuff, and gets out as quickly as possible, doesn't care. You know, he's the big superstar. Everybody wants to talk to him. Nobody wants to talk about Braun Breaker and, the, you know, as they do all of the uh, media and everything like that. Maybe because the media knows they're not allowed to ask Braun Breaker about his dad. I never thought about that, but that might be why. But they were good. Briggs and Jensen faced Legato del Fantasma, and uh, they won, and it was all right. And uh, all I can really add about this is uh, Brooks Jensen, whose gimmick is he's a virgin nerd. This character is not getting him over. Nobody cared when he was getting beaten on. But hey, gotta keep giving these guys personalities, even if they're of dorks. Indy and Persia did a absolutely comically horrific interview segment backstage. They're going to do some sort of thing at the show. Fans are going to vote about what couple's hotter. Awful. Whew. Holy smokes. Terrible acting. I was waiting for someone to deliver a pizza. Acting was really bad. Yeah, people are confused here. You guys don't watch NXT 2.0? His gimmick is he's a virgin nerd. That's his gimmick. I'm not even being, like, sarcastic. That's actually his gimmick. He's never been with a woman. 
he he admits it and he's a total nerd that's his gimmick what do you want me to do about it then we had toxic attraction doing a promo about uh the show on sunday and uh and uh jc and uh jc jane and Gigi dolan are out there and Dakota Kai comes to the ring because they beat up Wendy Chu. They all beat her up. And then Raquel Gonzalez, of all people, make the save. And then uh, Raquel and Dakota, who had a blood feud, a blood feud with two hated rivals, they square off and they hug and they're friends and they're facing JC and Gigi on Saturday. Von Wagner beat Bodie Hayward. And uh, they had uh, this uh, new woman out there watching. And they actually said her name this time. Her name is... Um... Help me out, Jim. What's her name? God, I don't remember. Doesn't matter. It'll matter when she's on the main roster in about three weeks. But it uh, doesn't matter now. Then we had Joe Gacy beating Draco Anthony. This was a is it horror. Buxton? That's what, Is that what the chat says? What's her name? <clears throat> I it's not nothing. Bluxton Pungsley. Oh, okay. Stop. And it's not so, Fallon Henley either. Okay. Golly, you people. Anyway, uh, Joe Gacy, Draco Anthony was not good at all. Uh, God bless Draco Anthony. I'm sure he's a great guy. But when you look at, like, the NXT 2.0 roster on national television, as far as, like, the number one greenest person who absolutely is not ready for TV, God bless him, it's Draco Anthony. And they botched the first spot, and it was off to the races from there. And Joe Gacy won. Crowd was absolutely dead. And it went a long, long time. Nikita Lyons beat Sloan Jacobs quickly. You know what's funny is when I saw the name Sloan Jacobs, I thought, eh, that's a pretty normal name. Nothing weird about it. Then I say it and I'm like, Sloan Jacobs is her name. She lost to Nikita Lyons. And then uh, Lash Legend appeared on the Titan Tron. And they have unfinished business to settle after stand and deliver. I hope they've been practicing this one for about a month. Because that could we'll be... See, uh, I mean, Nikita Lyons has a lot of strikes, so I'm hopeful that that will be good for Lash Legend, that she can just sell strikes as opposed to something else. Because she's... It's amazing to me. It really speaks to how difficult wrestling is as a craft, as an art form. Seriously. I'm when well someone, aware. A world-class athlete like Lash Legend can't grasp it yet that she can't just pick it up and i'm not ripping on lash legend i'm just saying you know res i'm sure she respects the craft but people watching should also respect the craft the fact that someone of her athletic ability and pedigree can't just pick it up sophia cromwell by the way i'll talk about that in a second jim because i got more Everybody to say about sounds that sounds like they are a cop show in the 70s basically then the main event was Cameron Grimes, a kid, and Roderick Strong. Uh, triple threat match. Uh, Cameron Grimes won. Match was great. I know you're surprised. And that brings us to what I want to talk about. I rushed through this because I got to talk about this. So I thought this show was was uh, it was pretty good. You know what you're getting when you watch NXT 2.0. But you know what I couldn't help but notice for like the 80th time? Well, what was the headline match? Cameron Grimes, longtime worker. A Kid, longtime worker. Well, given how long he's been doing it. Roderick Strong, really longtime worker. And they had, you know, a fantastic match. What was the other really good match? Oh, we had Imperium, which consists of Valter, longtime great worker, Marcel and Fabian and LA Knight and Nash Carter, all workers. They went out there and they just had a tremendous opener and then we had a great main event. And uh, then what else do we have? Ivy Nile and Ivy Nile and Tiffany Stratton. It was all right when they practiced for an entire week and went two minutes. And then, you know, Brooks and Jensen. I mean, that was all right because you had Legato Del Fantasma in there. But, I mean, Briggs and Brooks, they're not bringing a whole lot to the table at this point. And then Von Wagner and Bodie Hayward was just, it existed. Uh, Joe Gacy and Draco Anthony was, like, aggressively not good. It was, you know, that would have been a bad match on any shows I used to work on. And it was on national television. And same thing, Nikita, uh, Nikita Lyons and Sloan Jacobs, long-time practice match, squash, a minute, and that's it. So I'm, I'm watching this this show, and it's like, it's so obvious what the best things on this show are and what the worst things on the show are. And the best things on the show 
are the things involving professional wrestlers. People experienced in professional wrestling here on this professional wrestling show. And the worst stuff is the volleyball players and the basketball players and the gymnasts and the football players and the people that lift weights who are now being asked way too early to be pro wrestlers on national television. So then I read this article. It's on the front page of uh, WrestlingObserver.com. In an interview with ESPN focusing on their NIL program and specifically college football players, WWE Senior Vice President of Global Talent Strategy and Development, James Kimball, talked about how they're focusing on young talent to sign, especially in athletics, and gave interesting insights to what they're looking for. We would like the age number to come down, especially on the developmental standpoint. The second you enter our developmental program, and then potentially end up on NXT and then on a Raw or SmackDown, we want that number to be 25, not 30 or 35. Never mind whether you're a good athlete, or, which we got you got to be young. Otherwise, you're just we're not going to look at you. Uh, he says uh, they're sporting athletes who are looking to achieve their college goals before coming to WWE. Even if you come to WWE and you're 23, 24, 25, that's a significant improvement or over what has historically been the case with some of our developmental talent. They don't like all these, you know, wrestlers who showed up that were too old, even though they could wrestle. We're able to develop them in an accelerated manner. Get them. We're able to develop them in an accelerated manner. Get them to WrestleMania or Raw, do media training, do community events, all these initial exposures to the business. Those are done when you're still in school. Then you go to Orlando and off you go. What is their wish list for, for signees? They want you to be physical, look, size, athleticism, strength, and personality. Public speaking, charisma, character range, willingness to be coached. <laughs> like, you know, I, I don't know who this guy is. Kimball. Who is this guy? What's his name? James Kimball. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but you know what he isn't? He's not a pro wrestler. And uh, and so he's he's like... I'm sure been indoctrinated in a WWE and this idea that, hey, Kimball, you know, we need young athletes that are good athletes. And we don't want them older than 25. We don't want them to have any wrestling experience. We want them to be good looking and athletic. And then we will rush them to NXT in the main roster and they're going to be ready to go. Do we have any evidence that this has ever worked yet? I mean, I know you could probably say, well, Braun Breaker... Bro, Braun Breaker is a second-generation pro wrestler. He grew up with the Steiners. Do we have any evidence that this has worked one time? And now, this is like the whole recruitment process. We don't want any pro wrestlers. Never mind on our developmental show, the only good stuff involves pro wrestlers. But we've got to get all these athletes, because, man, we can teach anybody to wrestle. Fast! Just get them in there and rush them through. They're already... That's what they're saying here. We knew this, but now they're saying it. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's going to do to you. Vinny V, Happy Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way. Oh. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. You're the love of my life Come back to Monday Night Raw And be my wife <laughs> What? Oh, wow Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey! Oh, look who's star. here on the show, everybody There's a star here Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this To actually be proposed to in song was... A beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the the tone of the voice, you know. He still got it. <laughs> he still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. He was born August 15th, 1875, and so, died you, April 28th, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. 
Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. You're going to go to the Brian and Vinny Mac Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye, aye, aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, Lucky fella. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.